In this video, I will give you a complete guide on how you can crack data engineering interview. Data engineering is one of the fastest growing fields. There are so many new opportunities and big tech companies are hiring for data engineering position. So this is the best time to apply for all of these positions and get a job. But how? Preparing for data engineering interviews is not something that you can do it in few days or few weeks. You need to spend some months understanding the different parts of interviews and prepare for it. So if you are looking for some shortcut, then this video might not be for you. I'm going to discuss everything about data engineering interview process from understanding the technical round, how to prepare for behavioral round, what are the important skill set that you need to work on and how to optimize your LinkedIn profile and how to use LinkedIn to get a job. So I highly suggest you to watch this video from start to end and you can also take notes for your future reference. Now here's the thing, cracking or preparing for the interview doesn't mean that you have to learn few set of skills and then you are done. You need to learn how to sell yourself. It can be showcasing your work, skills or communication. You need to convince the other person that you are the right person for this job. You are the person who can add value to their company and help them solve their problems. That is the main reason that they are hiring you is because you will be helping them to solve their business problems. So we will discuss everything about these things in this video. In the first half of this video, we will discuss about everything you need to understand to prepare for the interview. And in the second half of this video, we will discuss about different interview rounds and what to expect now the first step here is to get your basics clear if you are just entering in the data engineering field that you need to understand what data engineering is what are the roles and responsibilities of data engineers because most of the people enter in this field without even understanding the basics of it so it's the first foundation step that you need to get clarity on what will be your role as a data engineer because as a data engineer you will be doing multiple things some data engineers work on architectural side or the data modeling side some data engineers work on building data pipeline or writing etl script some people work on the migration side some people work with the business people such as data analysts machine learning engineers or business stakeholders so you need to understand the different responsibilities data engineers have before you even get started with the interview preparation. So just understanding the core responsibilities of data engineers will get you started in this field and also help you to navigate what you should focus on next. To understand about the data engineering, you can just read blogs on mediums or just do the basic Google search and you will find a lot of things. You can also check out my YouTube channel. You will find the plenty of videos around this topic. And these are the people you can also follow on LinkedIn if you want to get updated with the data engineering world. It is really important that you surround yourself with the data engineering world. So you start consuming the content that these people post. If you do that, then you will start gaining the clarity of what data engineering really is. What are the different factors attached to it? So start by following these people so that you will get more clarity on data engineering. Second thing you need to focus on is building your portfolio project. Now to get a job, you need some experience, but to get some experience, you need a job. Now, if you don't have the job, then you can create your own experience by working on your portfolio project. Portfolio projects are one of the most important part of your data engineering interview preparation. A lot of people underestimate this, but this is one of the most important thing that you can do for the preparation. If you just have one good project in your resume, then you can easily clear technical round. If you don't have any project, then the entire technical round will be based on some tools or skill set. But if you do have projects, then that interview round will be around your projects only. So something that you have actually worked on, they will ask you questions based on that. So all you need is one good project. On my YouTube channel, I have published more than eight end-to-end -end data engineering projects. Now these projects are good to get started with. So if you don't have understanding of how data engineering projects are built from the scratch, these are the projects that you can get started. But you should not put all of these projects in your resume. The reason is that these projects are done by more than 100,000 people. Now, in order to stand out from the crowd, what you can do, you can use this framework. Copy, paste and add your own creativity. The way it works is that if you don't have any background or if you don't have any understanding about the data engineering projects, so you can start by copy pasting my existing projects that you can find on my YouTube channel. Once you do that, then you can start adding your own creativity on top of it. A lot of people have done this and they also got a job just because they did and added their own creativity. The way to do that is that let's say this is the architecture of my Spotify data pipeline. Currently in this architecture, we are using the AWS Glue and AWS Athena. Now, if I want to add my own creativity, what I can do is just, I can just replace this Glue and Athena part to Snowflake. This is what I have done by myself. I have modified this existing project and added my own creativity on top of it. Or you can also change the data set or you can also change some other functions that you want to do. 
the overall goal here is to just replicate this project in your own way and add your creativity on top of it so when you go to the interview or when you appear for the interview the interviewer will ask you that what you did in this project so you can share this entire story that i got this project then i added my own creativity on top of it this is how i modified this project this is how i added this new component by myself just by doing this entire activity will make interviewer understand that you actually did some work by yourself and you are the person who is eager to learn and explore this field so it is really important when you build your project you have to add your own little bit creativity on top of it so if you are completely new then just get started with my project and then you can start adding your own creativity on top of it this is how you build your first portfolio projects it is not that difficult everything is available for free all you need to do is sit front of your screen and start working on it i will provide all of the links to my projects in the notion document so you can check that in the description after this you need to start working on your linkedin profile optimization having a good linkedin profile will open doors for many opportunities there are so many hr people searching for the right candidate for the different positions now if you have the optimized linkedin profile then there are chances that they will reach out to you and for that you need to work on some of the basic section and optimize your linkedin profile the first thing in your linkedin profile is your profile picture so if you are looking for a job so you need to look a little bit professional so you can put the profile picture till your shoulder you can also replace your background and keep it plain this is one of the example of a good linkedin profile you can do this basic editing on a tool such as canva so all you have to do is go to the canva upload your profile picture do some basic editing just remove your background add some colors and then you can upload the picture on your linkedin profile second thing you need to do is work on your banner now whenever someone visits your profile they will also see your banner and what it looks like so over here you can mention your skill set if you have done some certification you can also mention that so the role of banner is to give you the overview about who you really are so you can share your skill set you can share your achievement so all of these good things will go over here after that you also need to work on your headline now don't put the aspiring data engineer or aspiring data scientist on your headline you are not an aspiring data engineer you are a data engineer you need to believe that so if you are creating your linkedin profile just write that you are a data engineer so good example of writing a good headline might look like this data engineer skilled in data processing sql python aws spark now adding your skill set like this is very important to rank your profile in the search algorithm so whenever any person who is looking for a data engineer with a specific skill set such as python data engineer or spark data engineer and if you have all of these tags in your headline or your profile picture then there are chances that your profile picture will come on top based on the keywords that you have added in your headline so it is really important that you start believing that you are a data engineer don't think that you are an aspiring data engineer that showcases that you are still learning you need to convince yourself that you are a data engineer and you need to start behaving like one okay after that there is a about me section now here where you write everything about yourself so who you are what are the skill set that you have your background and achievements that you have so i will provide the chat gpt prompts for everything you can just fill out the important information here and once you do that you will get the entire linkedin about me section created for you once you create your linkedin profile that doesn't mean you will start getting jobs and opportunities it takes few weeks or months to get your profile optimized so don't think that okay i've created my linkedin profile now i'll start getting jobs this is not how things work you also need to stay active on this platform what does that mean it means that once you create your profile you start interacting with the people and start forming good connections now being active means engaging with different creators who are posting about data engineering or related to this field so what you can do you can ask questions you can comment something good on their post all of these things makes you visible on this platform doing all of these things does not give you result then and there but all of these things starts compounding as you go in the future so be active create your optimized linkedin profile and try to stay connected with the people in that industry and the fourth thing in this entire thing is working on your basic data engineering skill set now for this i have created the complete roadmap so if you want to understand what are the different skill set needed for data engineers and how to learn them you can check out my entire roadmap but basically it is you need to know one programming language it can be python java or scala all you need to know is one then understanding sql 
SQL structured query language. Then there are other things such as understanding Spark, Apache Kafka, understanding basics of data warehouse, cloud computing platforms such as AWS, GCP, Azure. Just learning one is good enough. So all of these things you can find it on my roadmap. So these are the basic skill set required for data engineers. Now you don't have to master every single thing. You can master some of them and you can also have some surface level understanding about different topics. That is good enough. So having understanding and knowledge about these words such as Delta Lake, Data Lake. It's important because when you appear in the interview, they will ask you what is data lake, what is delta lake. So you can answer all of these questions if you have the basic understanding about all of these topics. So if you really want to learn all of these things, you can check out my data engineering roadmap. Now these were the foundations that help you to get some opportunities and prepare for the interviews. Now let's understand what you will get in the actual interview, what you should expect and how you can prepare for them. So depending on the companies, you might get different rounds, okay? Some startup companies do not have the coding rounds or the SQL round. They directly give you some assignment and some companies have a set of rounds that you have to go through. So based on my experience and the experience that I have seen from other people, I will try to share the good overview about the entire data engineering process. Okay, so first round is generally we have the coding round. In that you will get some programming questions. Now you can use any language in this case. Most of the time, all of these questions are very basic. So if you just solve 100 to 200 lead code questions, easy to medium, then you can crack these coding rounds. These coding rounds test you on basic mathematical skill set, understanding about the basics of arrays, linked lists. They do not ask you questions such as dynamic programming or the graphs. They only ask you the basic questions just to know that you can write few lines of code by yourself. In one of my interviews, I got three coding questions and out of that, I was only able to solve one question. Still, I passed that interview. The reason for that is that they don't really focus on the coding round that much compared to the SQL round, SQL. You will definitely get minimum three SQL questions. Well, they will give you tables, data, questions, and expected output. You will have to write the query by yourself to generate the similar output. If you can solve these three SQL questions, then chances of you clearing your first round increases because they are mainly testing you on your SQL skills. If you can write good SQL queries and generate the required output, then you can clear all of these rounds. Now, this is the first scenarios where they ask you the coding and the SQL round. But there are some companies that don't prefer this and they directly give you some home assignment where they will give you some data. They will tell you that this is the problem statement. You need to write some code to do this basic transformation. That basically means removing some duplicates, adding new columns and doing some basic operation. You will get one week of time to prepare for this and then submit the output. So these are the two scenarios that you will get in data engineering depending on the companies. One might be coding SQL round or second might be some assignment. After that, you might get the coding or the SQL round depending on your experience or the position that you are applying. So in the first round, you should expect these things and you should start preparing for that. Again, I will provide the resources for all of these, so don't worry about it. So if you are very new to Python and SQL and have no understanding about these things, then I do have courses on Python SQL for specially designed for data engineers. You can check out the link in the description if you want to enroll. Now, if you clear your first round, that is the coding SQL or the assignment. After that, you will get the technical round. Here, a person from the company, especially from the technical team, will come and ask you a few questions based on the skill set that you have added in your resume. So there can be either one technical round or it can be two or three depending on the size of the company that you're applied to. The way it works is that if you applied at a big company, then they might have multiple teams working on a different set of problems. So you will be working in one of those teams. So people from that team will conduct your interview one by one to test your knowledge on different skill set. So these interview rounds completely depend on the company size that you apply to. In some startup companies, they might have only one technical round, but if you apply to the big company, they will have two to three rounds depending on the level of people that are conducting your interview. They might also conduct these rounds in the group so it might become one single round. In this round, you should expect they will ask everything about your resume. So every single thing that you put in your resume, they will ask. If you have a good project, then you can easily make this entire technical round around your project. But if you don't have the project, then they will ask you questions around the skill set that you have mentioned. So let's say if you added a skill set such as Spark, 
they will ask you like how to optimize a spark query how to debug error in spark so all of these things they will start asking you, you can also prepare for the technical round just by searching for commonly asked data engineering questions you can just google it and you will find plenty of questions around it and you can start preparing for it now once you clear your technical rounds then you will have the behavioral or the hr round this is one of the most important round also most of the people don't prepare for this and they think okay this is just a hr round i can answer whatever they ask and i'll get the job this is not how the things work there are a lot of people who get rejected in the HR round and the reason for that is because they are not culturally fit for the company because when you're working in a company it doesn't only mean that you're working at a project you are working with the different people who are coming from different backgrounds and everyone have different level of understanding so how you interact with these people how you communicate your ideas how you resolve different conflicts that arises in the project all of these things will get tested in this particular round so you can prepare for some of the set of questions that are asked in this round but this round is all about understanding your personality and how you communicate with your team members don't skip this round don't think that okay once i clear the technical round i can easily pass the behavioral or hr round you also need to prepare for that and you also have like common questions for this so you can prepare for this so you will find the plenty of resources around this topic also so you can just search it on the internet and you will find that now here are the some of the other bonuses from this video so if you are still watching this video then in the document i have also added the resume template link so you can also follow that some of the interview questions and the preparation resources if you want to understand more about this then you can prepare for that so i recently read this particular book cracking the data engineering interview now this book has a lot of different resources and the pointers in that you need to understand to prepare for the data engineering rounds this book will give you the clear understanding about every different topics that you need to understand from the data engineering interview preparation so i will be giving three free ebooks copy to random people who comment below this video so all you have to do is just like this video and comment something share your thoughts or the things that you liked about this particular video so i will randomly choose three people from the comment section and i will send the ebooks copy over their email this was all about this video i hope you enjoyed this video and learn something new if you did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more and more videos thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video